Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the uh, MLPerf training benchmark. Um, MLPerf uh, is the work of many, many folks. Um, these are the authors on our uh, ML Sys paper on the training benchmark. Um, this is this is a fraction of the people who made this benchmark possible in terms of assembling uh, submissions and uh, supporting the infrastructure and helping with rules and promotion. Let's dive right into the MLPerf training benchmark. So MLPerf defines ML training as taking a data set, running that data set through a uh, model with a uh, training loop uh, until it reaches a target quality. For instance, run ImageNet through some model until it reaches 75.9% uh, uh, top one accuracy, for instance. One of the interesting questions that this definition raises is, do you specify the model? So in MLPerf, we decided to have two different divisions, one of which, the closed division, specifies the model. It says, for instance, you must use ResNet 1.5 um, as defined by this reference implementation. The reason we have the closed division is to enable direct comparisons between systems. If uh, everyone is using a different model, it's very hard to know whether it's the model or the hardware that is producing a particular uh, performance result. However, this does somewhat limit innovation in particular people wanting to do um, hardware software co-design or do advanced model optimizations. So we also have an open division that allows any model. And the goal here is to let people showcase innovation. It is almost impossible to have something that you cannot submit into the MLPerf open uh, division, provided that you can evaluate it using the same uh, evaluation methodology. For instance, checking a uh, top one accuracy as you would for another MLPerf benchmark. So this is just something to keep in mind. If you have a new innovative model or an innovative model architecture combination, is it is very, very easy to submit into the open division. Closed division is, is fairly challenging. Open division is really, really open. In V07, these were the benchmarks we used. We had three vision, um, three focused on language, and one on the very important uh, sub-area of recommendation. The metric in all cases was the one uh, that Cody discussed uh, for Don Bench. We felt it was a really the correct metric, and that metric is time to train. And just to underscore the reasons for time to train, the alternative to using time to train is throughput. Throughput is initially appealing. It's easy and cheap to measure but it is very easy to increase throughput at the cost of total time to train. For instance, by raising your batch size or lowering your precision, you can get a really good throughput number, even though you've actually made it worse for the user. So this is why we focus on time to train. Time to train does have challenges. It is computationally expensive. Um, it is stochastic, but we feel it's the least bad choice, primarily because it is time to solution. It reflects the needs of the user. This is one of the sort of core values of, of MLPerf is whenever possible, test real things as completely as possible uh, so that benchmark performance reflects actual um, uh, performance in practice. We do exclude some things from time to train. We exclude system initialization, which uh, is really heavily stochastic based on cluster configuration and state. We include module initialization, Model initialization uh, shows up quite a bit on large scale systems. We have sort of moderate size benchmarks and we're using them to benchmark systems with up to a thousand accelerators, sometimes even more than that. Those systems are actually intended uh, for larger models primarily. And so what you don't wanna do is have a very reasonable compile time dominate benchmark runtime. And in order to do that, we just exclude the initialization. So we can use uh, smaller benchmarks and bigger systems uh, without uh, disproportionately uh, representing it. We exclude data reformatting. The assumption is basically you'll put the data in whatever format makes sense for the system you're working with once and then use it multiple times. And we don't want to mandate a particular format that would give some systems an advantage um, and disadvantage others. Let's talk about some of the, the challenges in, that we had to overcome with MLPerf and the contributions that we feel we made to the community in overcoming those challenges. So first challenge is that ML systems is very diverse software stacks and hardware systems. It's really impossible to use the uh, same executable uh, like you could for maybe a more conventional CPU benchmark. You really can't even use the same code. 
There are things that you will do in your code that will be effectively tailored to one class of system. And it would be unfair to say that this is the, the definitive code we're going to use for benchmarking um, because it would advantage that system and disadvantage others, especially newer, more innovative architectures. The next challenge is that different scales actually require different tuning. Like you cannot use the same set of hyperparameters to run on one accelerator systems or one CPU systems as you would use to run on a 1K uh, accelerator or CPU system. And this is a little challenging because tuning those hyperparameters is even more computationally expensive. So that can give an advantage to uh, folks who can test a very wide range of hyperparameter values. The third is that, as I mentioned, convergence is stochastic. Because you randomly initialize the weights, you have non-deterministic floating point effects, there's a lot of run-to-run -run variance. And so these, these were some pretty big challenges, um, challenges not faced um, by previous uh, benchmarking uh, efforts. So just to underscore that last point, here's uh, an example of good convergence variance. So this is ResNet. And you can see ResNet has pretty predictable times to convergence, um, largely dictated by uh, changes in the learning rate. But here's a, here's a different benchmark. This was uh, the Minigo benchmark. And this is showing that even using the same random seed, there's still just enough system variance across runs that uh, you can't really expect everyone to get the same uh, number of epochs to converge. So how do we solve these? Let's start with the diverse uh, uh, software and hardware issue. We came up with the idea of reference uh, implementations, which is to say, here is an implementation. You are not required to use it, but you are required to be mathematically equivalent under a, a set of rules for re-implementation. So you have to do the same calculations, but you can express them differently. And then we do a peer review uh, to make sure that everyone has properly expressed the computations in the reference implementation. So that's how we overcame that one. To handle the um, different scales require different hyperparameters problem, we limited the tunable hyperparameters. So we said very specifically, these are the things you can change. We said very specifically, these are the values you can change them to. We're building up now a list of reference convergence points with included hyperparameters. So everyone starts with an idea of what pretty good hyperparameters are. The whole idea here is to sort of level the playing field for people who can't throw masses of compute at finding the right hyperparameters. And the last problem is that convergence is stochastic. We, uh, we solved that by essentially requiring multiple runs and using what uh, Lou was, uh, Christine coined uh, Olympic uh, scoring, which is you drop the low, you drop the high, and you, you take the average of uh, the remaining scores. And this produces a, a pretty reasonable level of variance. Um, it's around plus or minus two and a half percent for well-behaved imaging things and around plus or minus uh, five percent for um, less well-behaved uh, language RL uh, recommendation type tasks. And we adjust the number of runs uh, to, to get within those windows. We also came up with a, uh, a submission process uh, that supports these contributions. So pre-submit portion, people download the reference implementation so they can see how the benchmark should work. They read the rules, they join a working group. You know, this is still a rapidly evolving area and being in the working group is important. They re-implement the benchmark for their system under test. They tune the hyperparameters. They have a list of what can be tuned. They have good starting values. They may still want to tune it a bit beyond that. And then they run the benchmark the required number of times uh, to overcome the stochastic convergence at which point they can submit logs from all their runs along with their code and some system metadata in GitHub uh, before uh, the submission deadline. So this is the basic MLPerf submission process. So the key differences here are re-implementation, hyperparameter tuning, and multiple runs to overcome uh, variance. Post-submit, we do have a peer review process, and this is because uh, you know, there's no great automated way to verify mathematical equivalence of implementations in different frameworks and different systems. So instead, we have highly motivated competitors look through them uh, and try and find problems. We also allow people to borrow hyperparameters. So if you're convinced that someone did so much better than you because they just found an amazing set of hyperparameters, you're allowed to borrow their hyperparameters, rerun your submission, and update your scores. Then we uh, post all results. We make the logs, metadata, and code all public under Apache 2. So this is a resource to be aware of that you go look at an MLPerf results directory and you can find uh, what people ran to get the results that uh, we are reporting. And the last most important step 
This is a lot of work, so be sure to celebrate. Here you can see uh, you know, a hardworking um, NLPR submission team. Uh, that, that is a countdown uh, up there uh, on the, uh, the monitors for the first MLPerf uh, submission round. We, we did take it down to the, uh, the last few seconds and uh, not because we just wanted to live riskily because that was, that was uh, how the first round went for pretty much everybody. But we got it in and you can see you know, the, the typical wild uh, Silicon Valley engineering party here uh, as everybody celebrates this great achievement. Quick results and lessons learned. We believe good benchmarks can have a really strong impact on the field. Benchmarks create a defined set of problems with clear metrics. They induce constructive competition, where you get teams trying different engineering approaches and then results that show which of those approaches work best, which everyone can then adopt and build on. And we've definitely seen this in MLPerf. The end result is better software and hardware for everyone, faster, more scalable software stacks, over time, uh, better and better hardware designs. And here you can see um, MLPerf uh, driving industry progress. This is the uh, scaled best result across all submitters for each of the MLPerf submission rounds. So this is people learning to scale things better. This is people optimizing their software stacks. This is people introducing new hardware. And you can see that the field is making great progress.